Hey, welcome to Ginger Snapshots. Hey, this week I want to talk to you about my Sony 50 millimeter lens. Okay, so I use the Sony a7 III predominantly to shoot with in my, all of my studio work is with Sony a7 III. I had previously used the Pan Panasonic and I do normally use the Panasonic G9 to do uh, recordings for my YouTube videos. Um, today I'm in my office and I'm using the webcam, so I'm hoping it's going to be able to keep focus because I'm sure it won't be as good as my G9. But uh, today I wanted to fo uh, record in inside my office. Okay. So I, I bought the a7 III, the Sony a7 III, and I bought the kit lens that came with it. You know, it was only $200 more, so why not go ahead and get that lens? And I shot with that, and then I knew I wanted to get a prime lens, you know, because prime lenses are more sharper. Uh, at least that's what most people believe. And so I wanted to get a prime lens, and after spending all that money, I, I still wasn't sure what focal length I wanted to use. And also, you know, money was kind of a... Uh, you know, I didn't have a lot extra at that time. So I went with the Sony 50 millimeter lens. Uh, I will say this, that almost all camera makers will make a 50 millimeter lens in their, you know, native to them. So like Sony to Sony, Nikon to Nikon, Canon to Canon, they, they will make an affordable 50 millimeter lens. Part of that is because the 50 millimeter lens is equivalent to what your eye will see. Um, anything... Um, 35 to 50, you're, it's close to what your eye is going to see. So you take the picture and you're not going to have distortion. Um, if I went into the studio and tried to shoot with a 20 millimeter lens, I would have a lot of, uh, it's a wide angle lens and I'm going to have a lot of distortion. Those are great for like real estate photography when you're trying to get the whole room in the picture um, and you can't stand back far enough, but you get that wide angle lens and you can capture it. Uh, same thing applies to like if I, you're, you're using a hundred millimeter lens, you're going to still have, you're going to start working with distortion the other way. So, um, and also how close you can be to your subject. Uh, my studio is small enough that I don't really want to work with anything higher than an 85 millimeter lens. And but in my small space, I found that I was able to work with the 50 the most, and that's what I wanted to work with. So when I first bought it, I didn't know that, I, I, but I wanted to try it out. And so when I, when I first bought it, I actually bought the wrong one. I bought Sony 50 1.8 lens, and I got it at that time. I think it was on sale for $249, but it was a little bit more expensive than the other lens because it had in-body stabilization. And in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, this is better and this is what I want to do. Um, but that lens was actually made for uh, like an A60, a crop sensor camera. So like I know for sure the A6000 didn't have in-body stabilization. And I'm not sure at the 65, 66, you know, at what point Sony put the in-body stabilization in it because I, I wasn't looking at getting that camera. Um, but what I do know is that's what it was made for. So what that actually meant was that I, I, I had that lens and it was... My camera was capable of full frame, but my lens was only able to take uh, what it would on a crop sensor. So I wasn't using my camera to the full um, potential that I could. It would work, but it would not be to the full potential. And so the second thing is that the first time I used it, I had used, I had, I'm new to Sony. I'm new to um, the 50 millimeter lens and I have a family member come in and I try out a session with them and it was, mm, you could hear that little motor inside uh, the lens. You li literally, you can hear it. It's, it's louder and you can hear that little motor trying to get focus. And it just, it took forever and it was terrible and it was way worse than my kit lens. And I was trying to figure out what I did wrong. And it wasn't until I talked to some Sony experts that I figured it out um, that what I had done was buy the wrong one. Here, I was thinking, oh, I did the right thing because I got the in-body in stabilization, you know, I had the stabilization built in the lens. Um, but because I have uh, the Sony has, I think, five axis in body stabilization. It has a really good in body stabilization. It really does um, because I don't have steady hands and my camera's been great for stabilization. So I didn't need that built into the lens. Um, and so I, I was able, I think I got it from Adorama and they were very gracious and they let me exchange it for the right one. And so what I failed to do was I got an E-mount, but I didn't, I didn't look for F E-mount, F being for full frame. Okay, so that was my first mistake. So what was my experience after using um, the 50 millimeter in the studio? All right. First thing I will say is it's, it's slower. 
Um, since I have bought it, I've also bought the 85, 85 millimeter lens by Sony. Um, and I've also used, I use an, a 90 millimeter macro lens from Sony as well, but macro is a little bit different beast. I think it's just a different thing to work with. So I will say this, that if you compare the 50 millimeter and the, the 85, and I, it, it, I can't remember if it's 1.8 as well. Um, it's not the most expensive. It was about $500. So you compare those two lenses, the 85 will be pick up focus way faster. I mean, the 85 nails focus. I mean, it's almost as soon as you put it, oop, it's got focus. It, it is a fast focus. So when people are talking about have a lens having fast focus, I, I did not learn it until I got something to compare it with. And that 80, 80 was sharp. Uh, 85 is, is sharp and it just finds focus faster. So even with having the 50 millimeter that is FE made for my a seven three, it still is a slower focus. Now, normally I work with one person at a time. It's a newborn. They're not really moving very much or maybe a headshot. And I'm just not, I do do some sessions with cake smash and toddlers and they're all over the place. So it is, you know, you, you, you are having to have a little bit of work with that. But what I've noticed is that when I'm shooting with more than one, like I, maybe an outdoor session and there's a lot of people in there that that camera is like trying so hard to find each face, you know, I've got face recognition on and it just takes forever. And literally I have everybody, people, I have them smiling and, and I'm pushing the button and it won't find it. And I hold that smile. And that's when it matters. When you have people, when you have a group of people that are struggling to get everybody to smile at the same time, and then your camera is having a hard time finding focus, then, then it's a problem. So I would say that yes, it finds focus, but it is slower focus and it, and it does struggle to find a group of people in focus. The second thing I've noticed is that when it's darker, because I stroop most of the time I suit in my studio with the overhead lights off and I use strobe lights. And so the model light is pretty dim. Uh, and one of my lights, I don't even, it doesn't even have a model light so that when I'm using that strobe, it is fairly dark in there. And I notice that it just, if, and sometimes I'll turn the lights off and maybe even forget because I'm not using them, the overhead lights. I just don't use them. And they cast such a, I have, um, uh, beams, you know, uh, beams in my studio so that the shot, it shines down on those beams and then it creates a shadow. So that's why I have those off a lot because I don't want those weird shadows. Um, but normally I shoot at ISO 100 and I just, I shoot to where you, you know, it's almost dark without any strobe. Uh, so that's usually not a problem, but yeah, what I've noticed is if the lights are dim and I have a face, it does, it struggles to find that face. And I did a newborn session once and I couldn't figure it out. Why is this having such a hard time? And it wasn't until later. It was like, oh, wait a minute, those lights were off. And so it is a slower to find focus in the dark. All right. Also, I've noticed that when I'm in the studio and nobody's in there and I go to take a picture of the backdrop because I'm trying to set the white balance or I'm trying to just get a picture. I've, I've just randomly taken a picture of, a, of the backdrop to send it to someone to say, do you like this color? Is You know, different reasons. Um, when there's nothing else in the frame except for that backdrop, it also there's nothing to focus on. So it really it, it just struggles to even be able to take the picture. Um, so that's mostly what I would say. That's my experience. I don't think I have anything else to say. I just know um, product quality wise, if you you know if you're looking at it in the 85, I can't say that it's better than the 85 or it, even as equal as the 85, because that is my favorite lens of what I do have um, to find focus and be sharp and not have any kind of chronic ab aberration. Is that what you call it? Um, you know, the distortion around the edges and things like that. Um, any color differences. I, I just, I don't see any problem with either one of them, honestly. And, and, and for most of my work that I do, it, it is so sharp. It really is because I can zoom in and, and just see eyelashes. It's just that 50 millimeter. It is good quality. It does work for what I'm doing. I do portraits and I do have a desire to zoom in and see even the eyelashes. Uh, that's how sharp it is. It And it is so sharp. I would even say that I have to do extra um, skin smoothing because it catches every little thing. So quality wise, I love that 50. It works wonderful. 
Um, I do plan to probably buy the Sony 55 millimeter Zeiss lens. And the reason is because of that slow focus with um, the 50 millimeter. So quality wise, I think it's, it's doing a great job. And I would say if you're thinking about buying it, yeah, buy it. Um, now, if you do have some extra money and you you think you would like to do this a, a different lens, that's fine too. Um, but if you if like me, you wanted to start out, it's it's a good lens. It's just slower focus. It struggles in the dark, and I and it's just not as fast as the other lenses. So I hope that's helpful. Um, happy shooting! Now, don't forget hit like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.